Thank you. Um, it's funny, Gabe said the same thing next year, um, you know, AI will replace him. And I said, you know, he's better. He's going to be better looking for a while. So I think uh, it, it might happen. And thank you very much uh, to the to the presenters before this, Gaurav, Jerry, uh, Jim, their hard acts to follow. Um, but before I get started, I know there's a lot of live streaming happening. Can I just get a sense, not that I can see properly, but get a sense of how many people for the AI? So how many people here for the Cassandra Summit? Raise your hands. Wow, great. I'll try to make sure that um, I talk about AI just a bit. Just joking. Um, so um, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. It's been a long, long, long time since we actually had a Cassandra Summit. And the last time we had it here was 2016. So it is awesome to get everything back, everybody back together. Uh, and uh, thank you very, very much to everybody that contributes and uses Cassandra because it does actually run the world in so many different places, right? I mean, there's a phenomenal stuff going on, so. Um, absolute phenomenal innovation. My journey, I'm just gonna spend a couple of minutes. My journey started, it's funny, I see somebody in the audience who actually was, was in it and um, uh, my journey with uh, two people, actually, Cass with Cassandra started in 2012. Uh, I was at a little company called Apogee, and uh, we were running about 45% of uh, Black Friday traffic, and whatever database we were using was not working. And we had these massive fights between HBase and Cassandra, and guess who the two people were who were talking about Cassandra is going to rule the world? The NoSQL Jesus, Nate, for many of you that know him, as well as uh, Ed Anouf, and they obviously won, and we've never had it down ever since, and have actually done, the, done that piece really well. It's been, it's been four years at uh, Datastax, and it, is, um, it has been awesome. And again, I want to thank the community to actually give us an opportunity to come back and, and kind of energize and embrace the community and work together for all the innovation that we've done in 4.0 and all the great stuff that we've done in 5.0, which is in beta now, and what we are going to do when we release it, as well as what we're doing with Accord and other things for 5.1. So super excited about that. I'm gonna talk a little bit about leading the future with Gen AI and Cassandra. So let me start with a Vinod Khosla quote. For those of you that don't know Vinod Khosla, he was a founder of Sun Microsystems. Most people may not remember Sun Microsystems. They were actually a big part of the client server piece. Um, Vinod actually went off and started, uh, he start, not started, joined a company called Kleiner Perkins, one of the legendary VC firms, and then has something called Coastal Ventures. He's a big investor in OpenAI, probably one of the best investors in, in the history of investing. And um, I find him to be uh, very, very bold. Uh, and this was a quote he did at a Wall Street Journal event down in Southern California, which is, in 10 or 20 years, 80% of 80% of jobs will get done by machines. Um, I actually think he said five years, personally. I don't think he said 10 to 20 years. But the best part about this quote is not whether it's five years or eight years or 10 years, is that we, the AI dev folks, as well as the Cassandra folks, have a chance to actually see this happen and have a front row seat. We will not be on the receiving end of this. Right? We will actually be the folks that actually help with this. This is not the first time. This is not the first time that you know, our civilization has gone through a massive change. We've gone through many of these before, and we will sort through, sort through this one just like we have done in the past. So here's how I get a chance to spend a lot of time with enterprises. Um, and we have some great customers, just phenomenal customers, and I get a chance to talk to their view on it. And this wave that's called Gen AI is gonna be faster than any freaking thing we've seen. Any freaking thing, why? You know, like all other waves before of technology waves, this one actually is additive. It builds on the web, it actually builds on mobile, and it builds on cloud. Without those three, Gen AI would not have taken off. We wouldn't have gotten, OpenAI would not have gotten 100 million users without all three of those being in place. So these time frames that you see may look a little, for those of you that are in it, might actually look like it's too far out. These are super aggressive. So let's talk about them really quickly. Incremental and efficiency based use cases are basically things like Copilot, um, Right, and, and people are adopting like crazy. We have a great partnership with GitHub, and we're working very, very closely with them. And it's about go off and doing chatbots, right? Making your chatbots more aggressive. And I think SMB companies and enterprises will actually use them, will actually adopt them in a very different rate um, than because, just because enterprises actually have to worry about regulatory pressures being wrong, things like that. And then the real fun starts with transformative and revenue use cases. 
right? When you start talking about not just, you're not just talking about human beings using, you know, recommendations and this and that. You're talking about human beings with agents, right? People with agents. That's when it gets really, really interesting. That's when it actually has an impact on PNL. And that's when you start figuring out when you have new revenue models. Right? I mean, just think about retail banking. When did the web happen? It depends on who you ask. Some would say 92. You know, some would say 94. With Netscape, it started taking off. And when did retail banking happen? Retail banking happened in 2011, 2010. Right? And the reason was because you needed the web and you needed mobile. This time around, it'll go a lot faster. But the transformative use cases are coming, and people are starting to think through it. Here's what the view of the CIO looks like. They have to. There is no... AI without data. You can do all the LLM stuff that you want, but at the end of the day, you're not going to fine tune your enterprise data out in the cloud, right? And if you are, you're going to do it in your particular instance, right? And so the CIO's view is I want to consolidate my data real estate. And thanks to all the Cassandra folks and all the great work we've done in 4.0 and what we're doing in 5.0 with Accord, we have the opportunity to actually consolidate a bunch of databases into Cassandra, right? That is an awesome, awesome opportunity. The other thing that CIOs are doing is they're letting developers drive really, really hard. They will all decide what the AI stack looks like over the next 12 months. It doesn't mean they will implement it, but they are definitely doing that. These are the people that write the checks for most of the people in the room. Please realize this is how they are thinking about this, right? And they are very convinced, and uh, thank you for the open AI drama, uh, they are very convinced that it is going to be pure plays as well as hyperscalers. It is not a winner take all with open AI, with Google. I think open AI is far ahead, but I still think it's early innings. Uh, just having been through a few of these, this is still early. It's going to play out, and Gemini is going to start getting better and better and better, and Anthropic is going to pick up momentum. They have access to a lot of data from this small company called Amazon, and so they, they will actually get better. We think they'll actually do really, really well. The developer view is they are back. They're back in a massive, massive way, and they are the ones, there is no CIO out there that is making a decision. They're talking to the data science people, they're talking to the operators, they're talking to everybody else, but they're asking the developers how to build Gen AI apps. They're definitely back, and it always happens at the beginning of a technology wave. Everything, everybody is experimenting with everything. They're getting a little tired. I'm glad the holidays are coming up, because they're looking at every tool possible, and then they, but they are building the future of Gen AI apps as you go forward. How do we, how do we as a Gen AI company that is completely built on Cassandra think about our success? The only way we think about it is through production. How many customers are going into production? Take a look at all these companies, and they've all gone into production in 60 days or less. So I'm going to walk you through a couple of examples. Right? These are smaller companies that are moving fast. This is in the SMB category of what we talked about. So let's talk about Physicswala. Love Physicswala. Uh, Wala in Hindi, by the way, actually means uh, purveyor of, of technology. You know, purveyor anything. You can have vegetables. You can, you can also say physics, any which way you look at it. But it's a very interesting name. Um, they, are, um, they are actually doing, serving 6 million users, 6 million users, multi-model AI bot, and they did it entirely in 55 days. What a phenomenal customer, and we love, love. This is, this is what we get up in the morning to do. What we get up in the morning to do is actually build cool technology that, that actually developers love developers love that change the trajectory of the companies they work for, and Physicswala is one that excites us a lot. The next one is SkyPoint. That's based in Portland, a healthcare company in the senior living space. Uh, Tissin is here, actually. Uh, and so he's going he's gonna, to, I think he has a, he has a talk. Uh, they save 10 hours per week. And imagine the burden they have. Can you imagine their app actually hallucinating? That would kind of suck. Right, and so they really have to work hard at it, and they have, they have Astra, Cassandra right in the middle of it, and it's really, really good to see them make it happen. I would have loved to have gone through all, all, um, all nine of the customers. So here is the journey. They are multiple. Every company in the world has a version of this slide. 
Mine is based primarily on what my conversation with customers are and how they view this. They start with a chunking strategy, they have an embedding strategy, they figure out how they do semantic search, they do LLM selection, and by the way, this may happen out of order, not necessarily linear praise, and then you, they figure out what the drift is. They have to then figure out how they do things responsibly. Governance and other things and ethics that everybody else talked about, this is a part of their responsibilities. Definitely a top-down view, and then it has to be affordable. We actually land up forgetting that you know, a lot of people have racked up, There's, everybody has gone through cloud optimization, and they do not want to go through a Gen I optimization cycle again. Right? So, so absolutely financial responsibility becomes a big part of it. So what are the components? I see this big, uh, these, these are the number of minutes you left. So uh, what, what, Gen, what, Gen I, what, what does Gen, what does Gen AI apps need? They need ease of use. They need relevance and they need production. And I'm going to talk through all three of them. So ease of use, you've, you've actually seen Jerry come, come up and talk about how he talked about frameworks. They, by the way, you start the apps and you say, I'm going to use Python, JavaScript, and go off and build the app, which is awesome. You can use Vercel, you can use Retool, Retool, all of that. That's awesome. The frameworks will be things like, you know, Llama Index. You can use Langchain and others. We have a great partnership with Jerry and at Llama Index. They're doing great work. And then you need data. The new data types, models, and queries, and that's what this community is going to be working on beyond 5.0 and above, right? You have to you have to have new data types. You have to work making sure you focus on new models, and obviously you have to focus on queries as well. So this is going to be something that we work on as a community. Now relevance is interesting for all the AI dev people. You probably are very used to it, right? Having done this for a little while, I think about ease of use and scale, and it's easy. It actually works for me. Enterprise ready, all that stuff. Relevance is absolutely a new metric to think about in an app. It's not something I'm used to, and I'm sure it's something that a lot of people are getting used to in the audience, or maybe you're just way ahead. We use F1 because it's a combination of recall and precision, and so we did a recent test. Pinecone it seems to be a leader in the vendor DB, in the in the in the vector DB space. So we've done a bunch of benchmarking against them. Uh, JVector, which is now part of Cassandra, and we we talk whenever you see the word Astra, think Cassandra, right? Because that's what that's what it's all based on Apache Cassandra. But here is what the results look like: like 16% more relevant. And now you may look at this and say. 16%, that doesn't seem like a lot, that's right? I mean, that's like much, much more, much, much more relevant and not getting the wrong answers, right, is really, really important. So we've, we, and we are just getting started with them. I have some other numbers as well. This is just the beginning. We're just gonna get better and better and better with this, something that we talk a lot about inside the company. Um, production. JVector is now part of Cassandra 5.0 beta. It is blazing fast index. Who, who is going to start clapping? Come on. <laughs> blazing fast, 10x faster than Lucene. Um, it is an open source. You can go off and use it, and it's available to all of you. Absolutely kick ass. I love the innovation that we land up doing as a community. Uh, superior performance on throughput against Pinecone. Again, some results. We. I was, um, I, was, I was going to do what I normally do, which is take something that we were going to announce on Thursday or Friday and bring it into this keynote. I didn't do it this time because it's a third party. We actually have uh, a third party that has done some awesome performance tests, and they have gone off and done this, and they're going to be releasing a report at the end of the week. Um, so um, stay tuned to actually see that. Um, we also did some performance testing against Mongo. We obviously kicked their ass. For people in the Cassandra community, you're used to that, uh, to seeing that, right? I mean, it's just, uh, it's just something we do really easily. And I think we should continue to do that and make a big deal about it. That's not funny. That's true. <laughs> Come on. Like, you know, you're used to kicking their ass, right? I mean, this is like, this is the Niners against Cowboys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just a joke. Just a joke. Just a joke. All right. So, um, Again, um, here's really awesome, the fact that we can do instantaneous indexing and actually do reads and writes at the same time and not have to wait for it like other databases is something that we get thanks to all of you based on what we've done with SAI, secondary indexes, what we've done with Cassandra as architecture. Uh, none of that would have been possible. Yes, obviously it's available in the cloud as a service through Astra, but it's based all on, on, on open source technology that we built as a community. You can have all the ease of use, you can have all the relevance, you can have all the throughput, you can have the latency, 
You can have all of that, you can have the scale, but if you do not think about the production filter, this is something that we've been talking about, something that we are actually educating Wall Street on, right, is that if you do not think about the production filter now, it's gonna get out of hand. You absolutely, you, the costs are gonna go up, you will have to decide what part of your vector, about part of your database or your data state that you're gonna vectorize, and so price performance is gonna be something that is really, really important. If I go back to the chart I talked about, it is something that people will have to do. You obviously have to worry about relevance, you have to do all of that, but please be aware that magically, you're not gonna have 4% of your total budget, which is $5 billion, become $10 billion because of Gen AI. Right, it's not going to magically happen, and this is going. This has to be something that price performance has to be a category that you have to think through. What's really interesting, and I and what's interesting is you always think about ease of use. We talked about this. We talked about relevance, right? 16% better immediate indexing. We talked about production AI. You really need to make sure you're HIPAA, PCI, SOC 2 compliant, things like that. But the most important thing, the absolute most important thing, and a lot of people in the audience who build really awesomely scalable Cassandra, right, is going to think, they're going to think about why developer experience. Because in the beginning of every wave, it is about getting things into production as quickly as possible and go through experimenting. And that does not happen by making it hard for people to do. You have to focus on developer experience because it's about getting production apps quickly. You will not know which apps will take off. You might, and it might take two years, but there are a lot of small apps that are gonna take off as well that are gonna affect your reputation as well as the companies that you work for. And so ease of use becomes something that we as a community need to start thinking about as well. So thank you, I'll end by saying thank you very much again to all the people in the Cassandra community for the database we built together. It is absolutely the best database for Gen AI. All right, let's just be very clear. It is the best database for Gen AI, right? I mean, there's no if, then, buts about it. And it starts with data. Everybody in the audience has been working with it. It starts with you. There is no reason, there is absolutely no reason why any other Gen AI database should be used in the companies you work for. No, absolutely no reason. We have the performance data, we have everything, we are absolutely there. You should all take it on as your response to make sure that you kill everything, every other gen data, da AI database that comes in your company. There shouldn't be. Why shouldn't Cassandra rule the gen AI world? It should. Yeah, it should, absolutely, right? Why shouldn't it? And so I think the responsibility is with you and with everybody else in the community, and it starts now. Thank you very much.